I drew a little bit when I was a kid, but I really wasn't one of those artsy kids. There's always the kid in art class who is just kind of the best and everyone's like, oh, that kid, that kid's gonna be an artist. And I was not that kid. I was like solidly medium good at art. I could draw like a sad self portrait or like some anime manga stuff, but art really wasn't my passion. Um, I was much more invested in music and in being an ice skater. Uh, but then when I was 16, my dad signed me up for a comics class uh, with Scott McCloud. And after I took that class, I was just like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna quit everything else. I'm gonna do only comics. I'm not gonna go to college. I'm gonna be a cartoonist. I guess it happened fast when we look back, but when I was actually 17 and just sitting there working on comics, it felt like it was going pretty slowly because I decided that if I wanted to get good at making comics, then the only way to do that is to just make as many comics as I possibly could. So every day after school, I was producing page after page of comics. And at the start, it took three months to do four pages, but then it took one month to do four pages. Then it took one week to do four pages. Then it took one day to do four pages. And so, I kept pushing myself to get faster and faster. And every time I made a comic, I'd finish it. I'd make like a six page comic or whatever. And I'd finish it and I'd say, okay, I'm gonna do another one, but I wanna do this one entirely differently from the last, a different kind of story, a different style. And I basically sort of built this comics boot camp for myself. And if I had give, given up in those early stages and just said, well, this doesn't look good, I'm gonna stop, then I wouldn't be sitting here today. I had to accept that my comics were only going to get better piece by piece. And I really did believe in myself. I thought, you know, if I keep doing this, I am going to get better. And by the time I made the end of summer, all that practice and all those skills just kind of came together. It's hard to not put yourself in your stories. Um, what elements are real and what are not uh, is sort of something that I, I don't talk about too much because I like it to be up to the reader to sort of decide what they think uh, is real and what isn't, but absolutely. I think even when we're writing stories about characters who are different from us, it's imperative that part of ourselves is in there somewhere because it, it gives it gives the stories an honesty uh, to them. And like most young people in the world, I, I crave to talk about my experiences and, and what I've been through and what, and what I think and what I feel. Uh, that was part of why I loved comics in the first place as a teenager is I just had a lot that I wanted to say and I didn't know how to say it out loud, uh, but I could do it when I was drawing. Uh, and, that, and that worked well for me. I think we can write about much more than we know. And I think writing about things helps us learn about it. That being said, there's limitations to everyone and our points of view. Um, and it's important that we both recognize our limitations while feeling confident to, to explore the world uh, beyond just ourselves. Um, I think it's scary uh, to do that. And I think a lot of young writers especially struggle with it because we don't want to offend anyone um, and that's important but I also think it's important that we're allowed to to make mistakes to explore with our art yeah explore everything everything within themselves within the world around them uh, I think that everyone's potential as a writer is is gigantic I think I am an, activi an activist in other ways. I don't think as an author, uh, I'm really an activist because I don't think that making books uh, is enough. Um, I think that it, it's important um, and it matters to me, uh, but you know, making books isn't, I don't really think it's gonna change the world. I think that the world requires a lot more work. Um, so there, there are other things in my life that I do that I consider, uh, part of being an activist and part of just being uh, a person who's trying to make the world slightly better. So it's sort of, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard thing for me because I do think that 
my books are the most visible thing that I do, but it's not what is most important to me uh, when it comes to engaging with communities, um, especially the community that I live in. I think there are, are much better and deeper ways to, to help than sitting alone in a room and drawing. Um, that's just one tiny piece of the puzzle for me. It's a lot bigger. Obviously, part of the message is just that people should be and look however they want. Whenever I would see stories about people who were gay, they were a little bit tiresome because them being gay was all that was important. And I think now that's starting to happen more with gender, where it's like their gender is the most important part of the story. But I was always looking for stories where like their queerness in any capacity was not that important, but their adventure and their relationships were. Because I think like gender and, and queerness isn't that big of a deal and should just be something that can exist while we go on living our lives. And so making characters who are kind of gender fluid, uh, I guess the message is that like, it is just who they are and they have a lot more potential in them beyond just their, just their gender. That's a great question. And, and it was, it was very important to me that I set the book in Texas. Um, it is a very conservative state. Uh, there are many parts of Texas that I would not feel comfortable being there with my girlfriend or even like touching her shoulder. I would be very scared. Um, and it's because of that, that I wanted to tell a queer story in Texas, but not a story about how it's scary, but about how if you took all the people out of Texas, just the land itself, which is very beautiful, uh, isn't homophobic. Um, there's no problems there. It's just beautiful land and it, it belongs to all of us. And I wanted to tap into that feeling of wishing that uh, Texas could feel completely like my own um, and truly like a home when really it doesn't yet. Um, and it's one of the reasons I left the state uh, is that I can't, I couldn't really fully be myself there. Uh, so it, in a way it was aspirational, right? I was, I was making a story that's kind of a dream, uh, which is that I wish two women, two queer women could drive across Texas and have an adventure together and they'd run into no problems. I wish that could happen someday. And now that the books are finished, it's something that people ask about a lot. Uh, they're like, where are the men? Um, and, and to be honest, I, I really just forgot. Um, when I was making the books, I, I was like, oh, I want like a, a girl here and I want like a queer person here and like, and this person here. And then I think I got to like halfway through on a sunbeam when uh, the editor who was helping me on the project was like, where are the guys? And I was like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I forgot. Um, I forgot to include them. And I think it is in a way a response to mainstream comics, but it was entirely because I forgot. Oh, it's hard. Um, you know, every time I make a book, I'm like, I've done it. I figured it out. And then I make another book and I'm like, wait, what the, well, I don't know what to do. Um, so with spinning, I suppose that it, it absolutely was a more classical structure. And it's because I was relying on what I had learned in school about sort of a proper story structure, about a climax and an arc, about making an ending, um, building a tempo. And by the time I made On a Sunbeam, I think I kind of accepted the fact that there was no way I could just learn how to do it all. I just had to start to experiment. I had to try things out. Uh, so with On a Sunbeam, I developed the story chapter by chapter. So when I was halfway done with the book, I had no idea how it was going to end. I was literally figuring it out as I went. Uh, and luckily... The only reason that that worked is because later on I had an editor who looked at it all and was like, mm, it's close, but it needs like a little bit of this. And so then I, I fixed it up. And it was the same with Are You Listening, where I wrote the book in kind of a stream of consciousness. I didn't really plan it. I was like, I just am going to say what I need to say and see what happens. Because I've realized, too, that I enjoy reading stories that are more atmospheric and less 
plot based and less like actiony. Um, and so I've I've wanted to make more stories like that. But I think like the books I'm working on currently, I actually kind of went back to what I had did in spinning and they're much more sort of classical in their form. So as far as the evolution goes, right, it's never a straight line. I sort of do whatever suits me in the moment um, and whatever gets me the most interested in the story that I'm working on. I would also add actually that the way book publishing works, um, I have to have the book finished a year before it comes out. So it's very hard for me to see my trajectory because like even a book like, Are You Listening? I haven't touched that book in years. Uh, instead, I'm working on two books that will come out in two years, I think. So where I'm at story-wise and process-wise is always very different from what people are actually able to read, um, which is a common problem amongst authors and illustrators. That is a wonderful question. Uh, no, it's different now uh, because it's my job. Um, those first few years of making art when I wasn't really getting paid for it and I was simply making whatever I wanted to make, uh, well, that was the best. Um, and I'll never really get that back because now I have bills to pay uh, and rent. It's not that it makes me unhappy now, it's just a different kind of happiness because now the happiness is about the fact that I get to spend my days making art. If any of you are considering turning your passion into your job, you should think long and hard about if that's something you really wanna do because there are a lot of ways to make money uh, and there are not a lot of passions that we really truly have. Uh, and I don't regret uh, turning comics into my job, uh, but I do think it has changed comics for me forever. If you want to write uh, and not not necessarily draw, then all of your focus needs to be on uh, building your confidence as a writer. And to do that, you just have to write. You have to write as much as you possibly can. You have to write in different voices. And when you sit down to write something, if it's maybe a scene or a whole script, um, you have to finish it because you don't learn anything doing things halfway. Uh, the reason I was able to get good so quickly is I finished every comic that I started. And it's the same if you wanna develop as a writer, you need to learn how to take your writing all the way to the end. Um, and writing for graphic novels is an interesting skill and it's a hard one to develop, I think, because it's different from writing novels but it certainly wouldn't hurt to practice uh, writing for a novel, writing short stories. Um, any kind of writing can be turned into a comic. So try and figure out what kind of writing suits you most uh, and dig into it, do as much as you can um, and learn about other things outside of comics, outside of writing to help inform your writing.